nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Crime, criminals, and the cops who stop them. This is the real thing. We have gathered footage from around the world, from crimes in progress, news investigations, undercover stings and surveillance cameras. Much of this footage has never before been seen, from chases to shootouts. This show will take you for a walk on the wild side. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. Across the country and around the world, law enforcement officers face the same task. But every now and then, something incredible happens. A felon refuses to stop, or a terrifying mob riots through the streets, and it's all captured on tape. So get set, because tonight you're going to see it all. West Los Angeles, California. A stolen car races down busy surface streets. She advised a stolen vehicle moving northbound on Robertson. As a helicopter tracks every illegal move from the air, police units keep a watchful eye from the ground. The suspect is pretty much uh, just out of control at this point. The crazed driver races through traffic. Traveling about 60 miles an hour on surface streets right now. Police realize that this desperate criminal is ready to do anything for freedom. Very close, almost the At an intersection, cars screech to a halt, barely avoiding a collision. An illegal turn onto a very busy Santa Monica Boulevard. Cars are everywhere, but this time there's no extra lane. Okay, just smashed into an automobile. Police move in. Officers trying to box them in. The stolen vehicle's path is now blocked, but police know that if the driver in front pulls away, this maniac is going to take off fast. The assailant inside refuses to budge, so the cops get the driver out, the only way they can. Reaching into the window, he's still rolling. He's still rolling, they've reached into the window. Santa Monica. Okay, they're pulling him out the window, pulling the suspect okay. out of the window. Okay. And who is this desperate and diabolical car thief? Police are shocked to discover a 35-year-old female who just didn't want to go to jail. For the past hour, this unlikely and unusual suspect has been running from the law. Now she can't even walk. Uh, we can see, it uh, looks like uh, four CHP units staying a safe distance back from the uh, suspect. Another day on the job for Southern California police officers. But what looks like a typical pursuit is about to become an international incident. Burglary suspect Eddie Price, with his one-year-old son in the back seat, can think of only one way to lose California's finest. Get out of California. This guy is not slowing down at all. He's doing about 80 or 90 miles an hour. Obviously, he's going to try and crash the Mexican border. With visions of beaches and margaritas, Price races for two hours toward freedom. Police hold back, not wanting to take any action that could hurt the baby. It's a concern that Price doesn't seem to share. Lots of activity here at the Mexican border. Highway Patrol and Border Police are taking up positions. The suspect darts around border traffic, his eye on the finish line. Still along the right shoulder, slowing down. CHP is closing distance. He looks like he's home free, but traffic bogs him down, and Price gets stuck a mere 30 feet from his goal. All of a sudden, the vehicle arrived, and it was right in front of us. Customs agents swarm the car. Officer Alfredo Morales shatters the window. That's when the father does the unthinkable. He jumps in the back seat and puts a knife to his own child's throat. He asked me to back the officers away. I asked him that I will do it, but you know he has to take the knife away from the baby. Morales holsters his weapon. In a terrifying display, Price emerges, a switchblade in one hand, his own son in the other. The baby is calm, trusting his father. 
He's the only one who does. An agent tries to disarm Price with a blast of pepper spray, being careful to avoid hitting the baby. But it only makes Price angrier. He went back in the car, yelling that if we wouldn't comply, he would cut the baby. From his car, he demands to speak to Officer Morales, alone. The expert negotiator calms the father down and agrees to escort Price to the border in exchange for the child. He coaxes the suspect from the car. We've got the suspect out of the car, suspect out of the car again, and it looks like they're gonna lead him to the border. As they near the yellow line, Morales knows this is California's last chance to take this criminal themselves. He gives a signal. An officer rushes in with pepper spray. In a flash, Morales has a hold of the child. Price tears away and lunges across the border. Directly into the hands of 30 Mexican officers. He'll get his vacation, all right, in a Tijuana prison. The child is OK. And Price, the international fugitive, is now back home in America, in jail. Everybody on the curb, over there. Seattle, Washington. A deranged man wields a samurai sword and holds a street corner hostage. He is convinced he is possessed by the devil. Everybody on the sidewalk, not in the street. Cops don't take any chances. SWAT immediately arrives with weapons of their own. The man is full of rage and oblivious to the crowd. Police are on high alert as the man expertly brandishes his weapon, prepared to kill the invisible demons who haunt him. But before he can harm anyone, the tactical team tries to disorient the deranged man using non-lethal bean bags. The intent is to get him to drop his sword. Cops are in for a long one as the crazed man's behavior becomes more erratic and nighttime finally sets in. More serious measures are underway. Cops still avoid using real bullets. Now they try to subdue the suspect by spraying a non-toxic substance that irritates the skin. Next, the SWAT team blasts them with thousands of gallons of water shot from high-powered hoses. The water acts like a cannon, forcing the man down. Police make certain he doesn't come back fighting and pin him against the wall with a ladder. Success. And not a bullet is fired, and not a soul is hurt. One man's psychotic episode comes to a close. Paramedics take him to a local psychiatric hospital, where he can fight his demons with the help of a doctor instead of a sword. Smyrna, Georgia. A student leaves a birthday celebration drunk. Now he's down on 4 4. Something is all over the road. The driver heads straight into a parking lot and discovers the only way out is the way he came in. It's not easy to deal with teenagers, to get them to understand that drunk driving is a serious offense. Sometimes the reality only sets in when someone's hurt. The suspect skids into a quick U-turn and whizzes past police, running a car off the road. Suspect made a U-turn, now westbound on I-94. Now the genius decides to make another U-turn, but this time he gets an F for his effort. The cops literally crash this driver's party. A lesson that proves if you drink and drive, you lose. Direct hits and near misses. Bizarre twists and dangerous turns. Trouble comes from every direction. Battled back by the ones who wear the badge. Criminals, people who think the rules don't apply to them. They lie, they steal, they break the law. But when they're caught in the act, they run. Hood River, Oregon. This truck and boat have been stolen, the most recent in a series of thefts in the area. Police are now in pursuit on a winding highway slick with freezing rain. The officers believe their suspect is part of a ring of car thieves who have eluded them for months. 
Ramming police cruisers is just the beginning. This suspect is intent on getting away, and he heads for the hills, driving onto a muddy mountain road. There's no chopper support for these officers. They don't dare lose sight of the vehicle, even for a moment. The thief decides to use the truck's four-wheel drive, and he barrels up a steep, muddy hill. Officers can only take strategic positions and pray the truck doesn't have enough power. The officers face a new danger. The wheels spin as the suspect tries to pull away. Officers hold their fire. Knowing that there are gas cans in the truck, one errant shot could cause a deadly explosion. Pushing off the police cruiser to regain traction, this crook is determined to lose the cops and disappear into the mountains. The chase resumes. As the elevation rises, the temperature drops. The suspect lives in these woods and has the advantage. The police, unfamiliar with these treacherous trails, hope for a break. And they get it. The thief has overestimated his newly stolen truck. While he tries to get free of the snow, officers move in. The chase is over. Minutes later, the suspect is in custody. But criminals never learn. Two weeks later, while out on bail, this thief was arrested again for stealing cars. Huntington Beach, California. Flames and destruction shatter a summer day. For police, this is not just another day at the beach. The beach is the most laid back place in California. I mean, you never expect anything to go bad there. This mob mentality just took over and the police became the target. An annual surf championship turns ugly. For some members of the sunbleached crowd, the line between fun and violence has disappeared. The riot starts when police try to rescue several young women from drunken thugs, rowdy beachgoers who simply want to start some trouble. The violence intensifies as dozens of young rioters set fire to police vehicles. Officers mobilize, only to find themselves under attack. We basically were surrounded by the crowd. We started taking rocks, bottles, sand chairs, anything that was available to be thrown at us was, was coming at us from all directions. They started from one car over there, went to a um, lifeguard jeep, and then they went over the two police cars, overturned them. They just started breaking the windows. I mean, it was like no control. It was just, it was just fully out of hand. The outnumbered cops rally with the support of a police helicopter. Finally, peace is restored. However, memories of the violence on this beach will not be washed away by the next tide. Like a bat out of hell, this truck comes smashing through a roadblock in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Permission is granted to shoot out the pickup's tire. The tire practically explodes, sending dust and debris everywhere. The exposed rim is sparking on the pavement, but the truck shows no sign of slowing down. The other officer forces him onto the shoulder. And once again, the pickup almost crashes. More shots are fired, this time to the truck's right rear tire. Watch again carefully, and you can actually see the bullets hitting the pavement. Moments later, the truck fishtails wildly and spins out of control into a ditch. This chase is over as suddenly as it started. Auto accidents. By definition, they're totally unexpected. But then come those moments that no driver's ed course could prepare you for. Moments that are truly bizarre. On America's roadways, anything can happen, ranging from the inconvenient to the completely insane. Oh, he put that car. Look at him slide. Unbelievable. When your commute gets turned upside down, will you be ready? In Canada, an accident turns commuters into cowboys when Bossy gets away. It's pandemonium as police, firemen, and good Samaritans try to round up the frightened strays and head them on back. But it seems that cows are not nearly as sure-footed on asphalt as they are on grass. But then, neither are the humans. Crossing the freeway, 
This cow hops out of the way and safely meanders through rush hour traffic. At last, a truck moves in to help corral the stampede. The final irony, it's a milk truck. Here in England, a news briefing is interrupted by a series of accidents. The reason for the briefing? To announce the improved safety of this highway. Sometimes the most unexpected part of a wreck comes during the rescue. These medics slip and slide across icy roads to get this victim to an ambulance. But the last 10 feet are the most frustrating, as one by one they slip just beyond arm's reach of their goal. It could have been worse. This car actually chases its passengers down the icy street. Snow and ice can leave a driver looking foolish. But then, some drivers don't need a whole lot of help in that area. In Chicago, when this Midtown bank suggested a drive through window, this isn't exactly what they had in mind. And these startled residents weren't expecting someone to drop in. And sometimes with accidents, the most bizarre thing is that no one was killed. This police camera is rolling when suddenly not one, but two vehicles slide wildly out of control, giving this man a split second to save his own life. Incredibly, he dodges clear, and his bewildered reaction is to laugh. He doesn't realize he's one of the luckiest men alive. From wild chases to watery madness. You can see he's fighting. From dangerous manhunts to deadly collisions. The police are ready to take it as it comes. When police pursue drunks, they expect the unexpected. But in this next chase, even the seasoned cop behind the wheel is amazed when the driver suddenly pulls over for a brief mid-pursuit pit stop. Athens, Georgia. A high-speed chase is captured on a patrol unit's dash cam. The pursuing cops stay on high alert. The night is pitch black, and they know that the driver they're chasing is young, reckless, and dangerously drunk. But even these veteran policemen are more than a little surprised when the speeding Thunderbird swerves into a gas station. This isn't the way chases usually go. As his friends run away, the driver takes off again. This driver's so drunk he's weaving on the wrong side of the road and on the wrong side of the law. The officer calls for backup. Get me somebody up here and hurry. He's passing left around on W. For a moment, he loses control of the car. What's your plan? I just heard Hall County. We're going into a trailer park. Uh, stand by, gang. He's trying to wreck me. But this officer's ready for the drunken driver's tricks. The inebriated teen forces cars to swerve off the road. But it's not long before he gets a taste of his own medicine and runs himself off the road. Drivers running from the law. A danger to us all. But when the driver is young, inexperienced, and drunk, he becomes even a bigger threat, especially to himself. He broke, he broke, he broke. Slow it down, he's Police officers expect dangers on the job, but no one expects a traffic ticket to turn deadly, especially when the driver is traveling with a child. What you're about to see is one of the most compelling pieces of video I've ever seen. It's also the most shocking. Put your hands on the car. On that car, please. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. A lot of people expect to see uh, big jagged scars, you know, Frankenstein scars across my face. Uh, the way they performed the surgery, I did have uh, several titanium plates inserted to replace a bone that was crushed, bone that was shattered. Carthage, Texas. 23-year-old officer Michelle Jeter pulls over a minivan for speeding. The officer has every reason to believe this will be a routine stop, but in a matter of minutes, 
her life will change forever. Ah, you can sit there, it's all right. I stopped you for speed. Speed limit's 55, you're going a little bit above that. You can step out and ask me all night. It was just a, a normal, routine traffic stop. You know, if you can say any traffic stop is routine. The female officer calls in to check the license. I did it complete on Texas DL. As she Zero waits for a reply, Jeter talks with the driver about his visiting daughter. The man seems to be a model father. How long is she going to stay with you? Whatever, I hope. <laughs> well, I mean, at least until she's old enough to get married and move yeah. on. But word comes back the man has an outstanding warrant for his arrest. He wants him. Go ahead. Out of Texas Mechanics, outstanding DPS warrant out of Sulphur Springs. The man tries to cover up his past. You had any tickets from the highway patrol lately? Oh, I had one. I thought I paid it. Officer Jeter remains friendly. With no backup present, she needs to keep the situation from becoming dangerous. She gets permission to conduct a search. Do you have any objections if I look in your vehicle? No, I don't. Is that a problem? Is that OK? You don't mind just stay up the back. If you want your daughter to stand back here with you, it's OK. Or she can sit in the, in the van either, well, either way. Get her, OK. Then things start to take a bad turn. Have you ever gone to jail before? Huh? Have you ever gone to jail before? Yeah, but I mean. I just ask him. I just yeah. Knowing what the officer is about to find, the man expects trouble and signals his daughter to get back. During her search, Jeter discovers a bag with over a pound of marijuana. Now there's a problem. Put your hands on the car. Huh? Put your hands on the car. On that car over there. She has cuffs ready, but what happens next is shocking. I don't believe that I was out after the first blow. Uh, you can hear me yelling as I went down. This is the last of a dozen blows, a beating so brutal we couldn't show it to you. In the car. Go, baby, I can't go to jail. When a witness slows down, hey. the man starts to reach for the officer's gun. I really believe that if he'd gotten my gun out of the holster, he would have put a bullet in my head and killed the witness. But the good Samaritan pulls over, and the assailant flees. The helpful motorist is in shock when he sees Michelle's brutally battered face. Are you okay? Are you okay? This civilian now shows quick thinking under pressure. Help, officer down. Someone help, officer down. Getting no response, he goes to use the radio in the patrol car. Help, there's an officer down. An ambulance here immediately. She was in very bad shape. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't really believe she was going to survive. She'd been beaten very badly. The breathing was so uh, gurgled because at that point, uh, blood was draining down into her throat. I was afraid to move her at all. Within minutes, another officer arrives, and passers-by stop to help. Michelle, can you tell me what happened? But Jeter is unable to speak as she fights for her life. Get a supervisor out here ASAP. God almighty. Jeter's injuries are so severe that when an ambulance does arrive, it takes the shortest possible route, going against traffic. I've been in this line of work for almost 29 years. That's the worst I've ever seen a woman beaten. So you don't know if she was hit or shot? I think she hit her head. Within minutes, Michelle is on her way to the hospital, and the police are after her assailant. Jeter's attacker, Jorge Orozco was convicted of aggravated assault on a public servant and sentenced to 60 years in prison. You know, he almost took my life, which, uh, that's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's unforgivable. Hospitalized with 14 broken bones, it was necessary to insert four titanium plates in her face and head. But even a setback like this isn't enough to stop a woman of such courage and resilience. Three months later, Officer Michelle Jeter is back on duty. Some people call me RoboCop now. Part metal. We're now in Phoenix, Arizona, where the pursuit of a stolen pickup turns into a tragedy. This brand new truck was stolen in front of a convenience store not less than 20 minutes before. OK, now this person's more or less boxed in, but look at that. Cut right into that. This person seems uh, bent on uh, a rather suicidal path. Big, very heavy traffic slowing this metal down somewhat. They keep on taking the center lane. The 
high powered truck has managed to stay well ahead of the police. Crews are coming up ahead. Right has the road partially blocked. Going right through that intersection from into a residential neighborhood now here on the west side of town. And the, uh, the smaller uh, two lane uh, residential street. It is just crazy. I just can't believe it. We've had a very, very serious collision down below us here. The worst case scenario has in fact happened. Incredibly, the driver of the truck is ejected from the cab and thrown clear of the wreck as it shatters around him. Amazingly, he avoids being crushed as the truck rolls over and over. Dazed from the crash, he staggers to his feet and once more tries to get away. But this time, he doesn't get far. I can't just let you out. Miraculously, the driver of the other car survived. People who run from the law all have one thing in common. At some point, they all think they can get away. Whether you're a homicide detective in Russia or the United States of America, a serial killer is a police officer's most frightening challenge. Because so often, you don't know who their next victim will be or where their next victim will be found. All you do know is there will be a next victim. Downtown Moscow. A serial killer is on the loose. Five wealthy women dead, all with multiple deep stab wounds. Police investigation reveals a bizarre coincidence. All the victims were wearing fur coats. Matching wounds made by a weapon similar to this common hunting knife connect the brutal murders. With this serial killer, the ultimate fashion statement is now the ultimate death trap. A break in the case. From his apartment window, a man has seen the killer entering a building behind his last victim. The witness gives officers a description. With little else to go on, police stop all men fitting the general description, hoping to find the murderer and his weapon. No luck. Although the first choice is never to endanger an officer, Russian police realize that the only way they're going to catch this killer is to send in one of their own, undercover. The bait, a policewoman. Her only protection, a bulletproof vest. Not much against a knife-wielding killer, but it's the best they can do. A trap is set. She walks the streets near three of the murder sites. She talks into a hidden microphone, the only connection to backup. A suspicious man follows the undercover officer's every move. But at the last minute, the man walks away. He might be just an admirer. Two days, three days, not a nibble. A week later, two more dead. The undercover policewoman, wearing a new fur, works a different part of town. Within minutes, cops notice a man who matches the killer's description. He's only a few feet behind their officer. They try to alert her to the danger. But the radio transmitter is dead. There's no way to warn her without blowing the cover. The killer follows the undercover officer onto a bus. She's unaware as he sits nearby. The vehicle takes off. Police keep a constant tail. But they know that if something happens, they won't make it to her in time. Caught in traffic, the police lose sight of the bus. This is a unit commander's worst fear that he won't be able to get to his undercover officer in time. Off the bus, the suspect stays close behind the officer. Realizing that her communication is broken, she hurries to the rendezvous point. The man stays behind her. He suddenly notices that he's the one being followed. He tries to take off. Police move in quickly. Not waiting for him to strike, they strike first. In the killer's coat pocket, the murder weapon. The frightening ordeal is over. The killing stopped that night. Undercover police work, a mix of skill and bravery. The unknowns are high and the danger great, but it takes a special officer to go undercover. Des Moines, Iowa. Drunk and behind the wheel, this suspect is playing with fire. Iowa State Troopers want him stopped before anyone gets burned. Now more state troopers join this mad parade led by an intoxicated fool bent on self-destruction. Left 
The danger escalates as the suspect takes his desperate journey through city streets, weaving across parking lots and putting pedestrians at risk. It's dangerous enough to be pursuing a drunk, erratic driver on a freeway or a country road, but when they head into a neighborhood or a business district, the chance for catastrophe is even greater. Northbound on 42nd from University. The crazy driver flies past another stop sign, but turns a corner and slows down. Stop your vehicle. Suddenly, he opens his door. It's now or never. The police car acts like a battering ram, smashing into the driver's door. The impact is fierce and the sound is deafening, but the driver still wants out and tries to escape from the passenger side. Hands behind your back, both of them now! Another bad break caused by boozing and cruising. It'll be over three years before anyone lets this guy behind the wheel again. An act of heroism. He's coming right behind you now. A test of Looks courage. Like a show of desperation. Is running. And a struggle with madness. Good versus evil, with lives on the line. Oh. Hollywood, California, 0700 hours. A desperate suspect hurdles towards Sunset Boulevard in a stolen van. We're right above him now, coming up on the Melrose exit here. This guy is flying. He's got to be doing 90 at least. There's a lot of traffic around. Okay, it looks like he's completely boxed in now. No room to maneuver. The police are right behind him, a black and white. Wait, he's pushing through. He's pushing through. It's every motorist's worst nightmare. Morning rush hour, and you're followed by an oversized vehicle driven by a maniac with nothing to lose. He's just clipped the bumper of that blue car. Okay, as you can see, there's been a lot of damage to that vehicle. He has one chance to lose the police. He heads for the nearest exit. He's getting off the freeway now. Oh, he just sideswiped that truck. This guy will not be stopped. He's not slowing down for this red light. It appears he'll be trying to get, oh, and he's crashed, he's crashed. He sideswiped another truck. The chase is probably over now. No, no, he's still going, he's pulling over. He, he's running, he's out, he's out of the vehicle. Suspect is running. There are lots of places for this guy to hide from police. The cops on the ground scour the area, working with the police helicopter that circles overhead. This guy doesn't have a chance. Within minutes, they find him cowering in the bushes. Uh, there he is. The suspect is in custody at this time. This pursuit is officially over. This man's learned the hard way. In the real Hollywood, bad guys don't get away. And there's no happy ending for car thieves. Cops are sworn to protect and serve, but that duty becomes twice as difficult when a person doesn't want their life protected. New York's Manhattan Bridge, towering 135 feet above the cold East River. The most excitement this bridge usually sees is a fender bender, but not today. Be advised, we need EMT up here. Well, there, there's at least a dozen cops. This man is desperate to end his life after a dispute with a family member. He is clinging to a ledge less than two inches wide. When we first get a call of someone who's attempting to commit suicide, the first thing I think of is, why are they waiting for the police to get there? Are they waiting for us to talk them out of it, to help them out of their problems? They, do, they aren't getting too close, but it does look like he's talking to them. We need backup units on the bridge. Attached to lifelines, officers try to save the man. One even pleads with him. It's now or never. Officers make their move. The cop on the right distracts the man, and the other officer snakes his arm through the girders. He has a hold on the suicidal man for a moment. They got him. They got him. But then his grip it slips. Looks like they... No! No! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. When he hits the water, this man is falling at over 60 miles an hour. At that speed, the water's surface will snap bones like twigs. Miraculously, the man survives. But it's not over yet. An NYPD scuba team moves in immediately. The divers are down there right now trying to pull him out. And you, you can see he's fighting him. He's struggling with the scuba unit. But this is no longer about what the jumper wants. The cops have a job to do. What is this guy doing? He's kicking them. Be advised, he's on the boat and in custody. The man has finally pulled ashore to a waiting ambulance. Unbelievably, he has no serious injuries and manages to struggle all the way to the hospital. They got him. They got him. This bizarre situation went from dizzying heights oh. to sea level in seconds. Oh, no. Cops have a saying about attempted suicides. 
not on my ship. Albuquerque, New Mexico, a pursuit of armed suspects. Here's a situation where the bad guys have a souped up car that's much faster than the police cars. Unable to stop the suspects in the stolen car, the officer asks for assistance from the truckers up ahead. Any 18-wheelers uh, monitoring this TV channel, um, there's a deputy sheriff we're pursuit southbound of a red vehicle. Um, we need some assistance here. We're always concerned when citizens take risks to help the police, but there are times when they have, and it's really made a difference. Fortunately, one of the truckers is the next deputy sheriff from Alabama. Uh, I'm not near right now. Is that the little red car coming up behind me there? He's coming right behind you now, coming up on your left. High rate of speed. Oh, yeah, I got, I got him coming up here now. Move, move it over. Racing down the center divider, the suspects try to accelerate past the truck. Barely missing another police car, the suspects pull back onto the road. Now it's getting deadly. What happens next surprises everyone. Realizing that they would never get past the truck and might actually die trying, these two desperate suspects finally just gave up. Okay, we got them. Thank you, sir. Anytime, officer. Valdosta, Georgia, in this blue car is another suspect set on outrunning the cops. Going down now. Be advised, he's still ahead of me. Once again, officers contact a trucker for a helping hand. The driver of this semi decides to offer the cops an 18 wheel roadblock, boxing the blue car in. He's right behind you now. When the suspect makes another passing attempt, the trucker forces him onto the uneven shoulder. At these speeds, the rough surface thrashes the car's tires. I think lost a tire. Even high-performance radials aren't built for this kind of punishment. Yeah, this tire's coming apart. There's rabbits coming off at uh... Moments later, this chase is over as police take the man into custody, proving that crooks lose when truckers and troopers team up. Put your hands up! Perhaps the most disturbing of all crimes is violence against children. Worst of all is when a child is endangered by a member of their own family. The piece you're about to see is so compelling, viewers who saw it on a previous show ask for another look. So if this is your first time, brace yourself. This is truly incredible. Just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas, the still waters of this swamp give no sign of the turbulence lurking within. A disturbed young man has assaulted a neighbor and kidnapped his own nephew, leading police to a nearby snake-infested swamp. Family and friends watch helplessly from the shore. The intensely silent man ignores everyone, including police. Come on, Bo! Hey, Bo! Even in water up to his neck, the baby doesn't cry. He has no idea that his life is in grave danger. But officers fear the worst. With weapons drawn, the two deputies are careful not to agitate the mentally unstable man. Their first concern is for the safety of the baby. The closer they get, the deeper into the marsh he walks. A web of vines traps the suspect. Deputies want the standoff to end peacefully, but there is no reasoning with this man. Suddenly, the suspect embraces the baby tightly, announcing that he's Jesus Christ. He begins to submerge the baby. The officer's fury will drown the small child. <laughs> They struggle with the man, but his strength is solid. The kind of unyielding power that only madness can bring. What a baby, man. One officer tries mate, but it has no effect. Now the officers are desperate. His grip remains strong. They almost have the baby in the boat. One deputy hits the man across the head with a club. 
he finally releases his hold on the child. Help, help us! Get away from me! Ignoring the danger, officers rush the swamp. One of the deputies is visibly shaken by the intense emotional scene. A deputy carries a terrified child to a waiting ambulance. The suspect, finally subdued and totally disoriented, is brought to shore. After an hour-long standoff, both their lives have been saved. When children are involved in a dangerous situation or a life and death situation, your, emotional, your emotions become very much part of it, and you have a commitment to, to resolve it probably more than any other situation. All I could think of was saving that baby. We tried every means to save both the baby and the suspect's life. It's seldom that an officer gets to see the positive results of a job well done, but these Arkansas deputies are lucky. I have seen the child uh, once. It appeared that he recognized me, and uh, as a matter of fact, he reached out to me with a smile on his face. This is what you go to law enforcement for. You know, you see all these shows when you're a kid, you know, a hero goes out there and saves somebody. Feels pretty good. In a world full of danger. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, oh no. Teeming with violence and overrun with crime. You want me to shoot you? There's one force that keeps it all in check. The power of the law. My neck of the woods is the state of Texas, okay? Every day, the police put their lives on the line. With a steadfast devotion to duty and a commitment to justice, they dance with danger and uphold the law. 